What's up you guys? My name is Aubrey and this is my channel and today I want to talk about a market crash. Now this subject isn't something that I take on lightly because of the fact that I feel like far too many YouTubers and economists and TV personalities throw this term around far, far too flippantly. But the fact of the matter is there are a lot of indications out there that suggest that we could be heading towards a market crash. So in this video, I'm going to be breaking down what these indicators are and I'm going to be talking about what you can do to prepare for a market crash if one comes. Comes. So let's get started. So let's just dive right into it. So as we sit here today in May of 2021, we are in the process of getting out of the pandemic, which is great news. But I fear that we are getting closer and closer to a market crash that could have just as significant market impacts as the pandemic had. Now, the thing about the pandemic is that the cause of the pandemic had nothing to do with the fundamentals of the stock market, the economy, the housing market, none of that. The pandemic is what experts refer to as a black swan event. This means that it was an event that was not connected to any other financial indicators. It was simply just a one-off event that nobody could have predicted, but it still had a significant impact on the markets, the world, and the economy. But despite the fact that we've spent the last year trying to recover from the pandemic and the financial consequences that came from that, I fear that we're nearing closer and closer to an economic crash closer to what we saw in 2008. Now, whenever it comes to predicting a market crash, there are a number of different methods that experts use to try to predict this event. The first one of these indicators is the inverted yield curve. Now, if you don't know what an inverted yield curve is, don't worry. Let me explain in a very easy to understand way that I'm sure will just barely scratch the surface of what a yield curve is. Now, this right here is a normal bond yield curve. Now, whenever we look at a normal yield curve like this, you can see that as the maturity date of a bond extends outward to a longer period of time, the yield of that bond also goes up. This is because in a healthy economy, if you borrow money for an extended period of time, that is traditionally going to cost you more money than it would if you borrowed money from a short period of time. For example, if you borrowed money and you borrowed that money with a loan period of 10 years, meaning you had 10 years to pay that loan back, you will have a higher interest rate than if you borrow that exact same amount of money with a two year term. That's because of the fact that if you select a 10 year term versus a two year term, that 10 year term is going to tie up that money for a significantly larger period of time. This normal bond curve is what we want to see whenever the economy is healthy. It means that it is cheaper to borrow money in the short term versus the long term. This on the other hand is an inverted yield curve. And basically what this means is this shows that a younger treasury bond will yield more than a old older treasury bond. And this is not a good thing. This is an indicator that the economy could potentially be entering a bear market, which is not a good thing. And basically why this is a bad thing is it's an indicator that investors do not have confidence in long-term financial conditions, which can be an indicator of a bear market. Now, as of right now, we actually do not have an inverted yield curve, which is a really great sign. You can see the current data for our yield curve, which you can see very clearly is not inverted, which is great. But there are some other signs that I would like to mention that don't look quite as good. In addition to the inverted yield curve, another metric that experts will use to predict a market crash is investor or market complacency. Basically, investor sentiment and how they're feeling about the market. Are they feeling optimistic, complacent, or fearful with the current market conditions? The unfortunate reality of the situation is, is that bad things oftentimes happen when we least expect them. And widespread complacency or even widespread optimism can potentially be a sign that a market crash is coming. Now, the way that this is typically measured is a handful of different ways. Number one is the VIX or volatility index otherwise known as the fear index. Another measure that experts look towards is short interest. How often and for how much are stocks being shorted versus being invested on in the long term? Short interest is an indicator that investors believe that stock prices are going to go down, which can be indicative of a market crash. Moving averages as well as the high-low index are also two measures that experts will look towards in order to measure market sentiment and complacency across the market. 
All of these measures kind of give a different idea on where complacency and where sentiment is, but high sentiment and people feeling complacent and very optimistic can oftentimes be an indicator of a market crash coming. And that is certainly what we are seeing here in 2021. Now, all things considered in 2021, the market is overvalued. There is overvaluation across the board and there is extreme optimism with investors all over the world. Another indicator is excessive and overvalued stocks. Now, whenever it comes to how stocks are priced, typically PE ratios are one of the number one indicators of how a stock price should be priced and it determining whether or not a stock price is overvalued or undervalued. The historic average in the S&P 500 is about a PE ratio of 15. And as we see here today in May of 2021, the average PE ratio in the S&P 500 is 22, which is about 33% higher than the historic average, which would be an indicator that stocks could potentially be overvalued by about 33%. And today in 2021, PE ratios aside, we are seeing historic stock market performance day after day, week after after week and month after month. And this was something that was a commonality amongst every single market crash that we've seen in modern history. In fact, dating back all the way back to the Great Depression, all of the market crashes that we have had since then have been preceded by all time high stock prices. And that is certainly something that we are seeing today in 2021. Now, all in all, these are just a handful of the potential indicators that could indicate that we are heading towards a market crash, but there are other things that are a bit worrisome as well. For example, the extremely high housing values and extremely high real estate values. Now, if you would have asked me this time last year, whether or not I believe the housing and real estate market would go up and down following the pandemic, I would have told you without a shadow of a doubt, the market would go down. In fact, I've been betting on it for the last year as I I'm somebody who's wanting to get into real estate. But the fact is, regardless of the economic climates, regardless of what is happening around the world, we are still seeing real estate prices and housing prices continue to rise to crazy levels. In fact, I'm sure you guys have seen the pictures and the news articles about people waiting in line for hours just to view a house, people having to go to, into bidding wars with hundreds of different bids to try to get a house, and people paying five figures over asking price just to get a house and win the bid. Now, of course, there are some explanations that experts like to use to justify the high values in real estate right now, including the lumber shortage, including the fact that for a year, realtors weren't able to work and people weren't able to look at houses, and now people are flooding the market, including the fact that people couldn't adequately sell their houses for an entire year, and because of that, now everybody's wanting to move. And though I do think that all three of these reasons are valid reasons to see an increase in the housing market, I do not think that they justify the prices that we've been seeing over the last six months to a year. And I do think that the crazy market that we've been seeing in both commercial real estate as well as residential real estate is indicative of really bad times coming. Now, I am of course not an expert when it comes to predicting or planning for a recession. So take everything I have to say with a grain of salt, being that I am just simply a YouTuber who has done some research on this topic. But the fact is there are a lot of signs out there that are pointing to a potential crash happening. And I think that investor sentiment is simply too high. I think that prices are too high and I think that we are due for a correction coming soon. Now begs the question though of what can you do to prepare for this? Now this is something that I've been struggling with personally because of the fact that I have money that I want to invest but I don't know where I want to invest it. So here are a few tips that I've done in my own life that I think could help benefit you. Number one is to be patient. I think that one thing that could end up really hurting home buyers and investors in the current economic climate is overpaying for assets, whether it be real estate, whether it be stocks, whether it be cars for a Turo fleet. Overpaying for something could end up really hurting you in the future. And I would encourage you that if you're somebody who is able to wait, I would encourage you to wait for the market to settle a bit. There is no reason to go out and buy a house 80K over asking price just for the sake of getting a house. Now I understand that not everybody can wait to buy a house. I understand that some things happen and you need it right here and right now. But if you're able to, I would encourage you to wait on making these big investment purchases until the market settles. The second tip that I have is for those of you that invest in the stock market. Now, I personally do not have a whole lot of faith in the stock market short term. I do feel as though we are heading into a bear market. And because of that, I've been very cautious into what stocks I invest in. 
Now, if you're somebody who is investing in the stock market, I would encourage you to cover your cost basis and to pull out the money that you initially put in and to only invest with the money that you've made in the market, not with the money that you initially put into the market. This is a great way to protect your initial investment and only make money off of house money, which means there's really no way to lose because if you lose money, it was money you never really had to begin with. In addition to pulling out the initial investment, I would also still only encourage you to invest in money that you do not need to pull out anytime soon. If you are using the market to hold money that you plan on using to buy a house or to buy a car or to use for a vacation later on, I would encourage you to only invest money that can stay in the market for an extended period of time. That way, if a market crash happens, you don't need to pull out that money. Instead, you can just leave it in the market, ride the wave of the recession, and then keep it there once the economy starts to grow again. When it comes to the market, you only lose money if you sell. And if you don't sell during a recession, then you've never actually lost money. You've just had a period of time where your portfolio may be a bit red. And number three is to put yourself in a position to invest when a recession comes. As Warren Buffett says, be greedy when others are fearful and be fearful when others are greedy. And I think that that is extremely great advice. Whenever there's an economic downturn or whenever there is a recession, that is a great time to take advantage on great prices in the stock market, great prices in real estate. It's a great time to start buying assets for a business or for an investment portfolio. It is a wonderful time to get ahead. But in order to get ahead and to take advantage of these opportunities, you have to first have the cash available to do so. So because of that, I would encourage you to start accumulating some cash. Now, I know that there's a lot of people out there that will say inflation will just cause your cash to go down to nothing. And that because of that right now is not a good time to save money. And to an extent, I do agree. I don't think it's a good idea to keep 100% of your assets in cash, but I do think that having cash on hand for those opportunities that may come in a recession is a really great thing to do. Now, with that being said, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Like I said earlier, I'm not an economist. I'm not an expert. I'm just simply somebody who is an investor, who is a business person. And I've been looking at the trends in the market and I am starting to get a bit worried. Now that's not to say that we 100% will have a market crash. I don't know if that's true. We may or we may not have one, but I do think that it's important to be prepared. That way, if we do have one, you are ready to deal with that. But like always, you guys, if you have any questions, comments, or if you have anything to add, make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.